Hey, Facebook family, how you doing? God bless you. This is Apostle Pastor Miguel A. Ramos coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. Hey, Amen. I'm excited. I'm over here at a conference. I'm being fed. I'm being, you know, just imparted into it. It's just such a great experience. But I want to welcome you to our morning pep talk. Hey, Amen. I, uh, I believe it's about 7.05 over there in Jersey. It's 6.05 over here in Dallas. It's still dark. But nevertheless, listen, we, we have to continue to do this, we have to have consistency and we have to continue to motivate each other, amen? I motivate you through the words that I speak. You motivate me by just listening and receiving the word, amen? So I wanna to talk to you today about a topic that it just dawned on me throughout the day yesterday. I was going back and forth and I heard so many great things, but one one thing really stuck to my heart and it was where I was in a session, a counseling session, uh, you know, about learning how to further my counseling and stuff like that. And, and I learned a, a thing, I heard a thing that said, you know, we, we should learn how to celebrate ourselves, and that self celebrating is not selfish. It's not selfish. You should be able to celebrate yourself through small victories. Listen, success, people think success is this big chunk of, of whatever that, that you have to acquire. But success comes in increments, little by little. And every step that you make, you got to celebrate yourself. But before I talk about self-celebrating, not being selfish, you have to learn how to encourage yourself. Because the reason a lot of us don't get to the celebration part is because we don't get to the encouragement part, amen? So I wanna to talk to you very briefly about encouraging yourself, and then once you encourage yourself, pushing yourself forward, and then celebrate yourself in everything that you do. That's not selfish, so, so let me share something with you. You have to encourage yourself. You have to understand that nobody can be your biggest fan but you, amen? It's not a pride thing, it's not an ego thing, it's not, you know, something about, you know, I'm being conceited or macho or, or independent woman or whatever. But listen, you have to encourage yourself. You know, you have to walk past the mirror and say, hey, how you doing? You know, you're like Joey used to say from friends, nevertheless, you don't know about that. But listen, how you doing, amen? You have to encourage, you have to say, you know what? You are handsome, you are beautiful, you are a great looking woman, you are a great looking man. You have to look in the mirror and says, you will succeed. You will be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. You will be first and not be last. You have to let yourself know, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter whoever is not telling you that, at least you should be able to tell that. Listen, Listen, I don't understand how we can spiral ourselves down, down to a, 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 you know, a situation or a whirlpool of depression by telling ourselves we're not worthy. So why don't we do the opposite? You know, look in the mirror and say, look at you, good looking. Yeah, I know them grays are coming out, but you still look good. You still got that curly hair. Look at you. Oh, yeah, working on my muscles over here. Nevertheless, y'all know me, I'm silly. But listen, encourage yourself. No matter what you look like, no matter what you're going through, I don't care if you have to lose 100 pounds and you lost six Six ounces, celebrate yourself from that. Don't you know that a step taken forward is a step from where you were at? Listen, you may not be where you want to be at, but you're sure not at what you used to be at. Amen. So you have to celebrate yourself. I want to share with you a story from 1 Samuel chapter 30. Where the Bible said that David and his fellows, you know, his brothers, whatever, they were out hanging out. They were out of town hanging out. And all of a sudden, his enemies, the Amalekites, they came upon his village and they ravaged everything. They burned all the houses. They burned all the shacks. They burned all the tools and everything. And then what they did was they took all their families, all the women, all the children. They took all their family. When the men came back, they were so discouraged. And then they started pointing fingers. And they started blaming David for all the mishap that they had. And David was so distraught and so taken down. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible said that David strengthened himself and encouraged himself. And once he encouraged himself, he went to God and he asked God, should I pursue? And God told him, yes, go ahead and take it. But the most valuable thing about that story was that they took his wife, his children, but they never destroyed it. I want to let you know something, and this is a prophetic word. The enemy may have taken something from you, but it's not destroyed. Meaning you can still recover it, but you have to encourage yourself. You have to believe that you can do it. You have to believe that you're able, that you're equipped, that God has placed you, that God has not given you temptation that is not common to man, but he's given you a way of escape and a way to glorify him and a way to win. You are my friends on the winning team. Amen. A, a, a good friend of mine 
mind yesterday, you know, gave me a, such an encouraging word because I was looking at everything that God has placed before me. Sometimes I believe what gets us to a place of discouragement is when we see what, what our desires are, when we see what God wants for us, and sometimes we think they're too big for us to acquire it. Sometimes we say, well, I, I, I can't do that. I, I can't be a public speaker because I'm afraid to speak to people. I, I, I can't work with people because I, I'm afraid of them touching me or hugging me. I've been hurt from the past. I have hurt and habits and, and hang-ups, you know. We have all these things that we come as humans with all these baggages. And when we look at where we go, we, we think, well, you know, I don't think they're going to check these bags when I get in the plane because there's so much. But guess what? God will provide for every endeavor. If your vision is not so big that it intimidates you, then you're insulting God. Your vision has to be greater than what you can acquire it because if you can acquire it, then you won't need God. But your vision has to be great, so great that yes, it intimidates you. It brings a level of terror, a level of fear to you so that you can encourage God in achieving that thing. Amen. Listen, I'm super pumped up, super encouraged. I want to talk about celebrating yourself. You got to celebrate yourself. Amen. Everything that you do, you got to encourage yourself and celebrate. I don't care if you took a step forward. I don't care if you say, you know what? Today is the day that I transform my life and you make that commitment. Listen, celebrate yourself for that commitment. Even if you do nothing else. You know, but you made that commitment, celebrate yourself for that commitment. Or you say, you know what, I'm going to the gym today and you just set foot in the gym and, and you get that overwhelming feeling, you just hop on the treadmill for like two minutes and then you go home, work up a beat and that's it. Celebrate yourself for that. I don't care if you do one crunch, you know, you're trying to lose, you know, the midsection, you do one crunch, celebrate yourself for that. I work with a, a group of people, a team of people. Everybody's pouring into me. Somebody tells me, do this, do that. Listen, I do it and I celebrate myself. Ali, I see you. God bless you, my friend. Pastor Annette Ramos, my dear baby. I love you, my wife. I see you. God bless you. Jojo, God bless you, my son. Amen. Thank you all for encouraging me as I encourage you, but I want you all to celebrate yourself in everything that you do. Celebrate yourself. You have to be your biggest fan. Not conceited, not being prideful, not being egotistic, but you have to be your biggest fan. You have to root for you. Listen, in the team of Miguel Ramos, Nobody roots for Miguel Ramos like Miguel Ramos. That's why I'm crazy, I'm wild, I'm hungry, I'm going after it. I am my biggest fan. You have to be your biggest fans, my friend. Celebrate yourself. It's not selfish. Amen? God bless you all. Listen, follow me, Miguel Ramos on Facebook, amen, Instagram, and Miguel A. Ramos 82. Catch me on Facebook Live every Sunday, 10 a.m., 12 noon, amen. Listen, you can come by to our sanctuary, New Destiny Worship Center, located at 1545 Lakewood Road, amen, in the heart of Toms River, New Jersey, Tuesdays. Tuesday, listen, I'll be teaching the Word of God, 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, and very soon I'm working on a big project. Ali, I see you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. This is my coach. I love this guy. Listen. Working on a big project. I'm working on Miguel Ramos Ministry, amen. Mr. Miguel Ramos coming soon to you. Look for that. Listen, I'm celebrating myself. I see you all the love. I see all the thumbs up. I love you guys. I'm celebrating myself. I pray that you celebrate you as well. I see you next time, my friends. I catch you over here on Facebook Live. To God be the glory. And remember, you are more, that's more than a conqueror. God bless you.